he is one of the kindest, um, most sincere people I've encountered. Gala fam, it's Rachel and Rhea, and we're the Gala sisters. We're actually Irish twins. Yeah, which means we're 15 months apart or less. So we have another spill of coffee with someone else who met Marilyn Manson twice, and she's got a really interesting perspective. We cannot wait to share this with you. This is probably one of the most interesting stories I've heard so far. Mm -hmm. So before we get started, please make sure you are following us on social media, scrolling below, as well as linked in the description box down below. We also built our own website where we sell homemade bath and cleaning products, and we have three different blogs. So go check that out at www.thegalsisters.com. And if you'd like to stay involved and informed for free, then click that big old subscribe button. And with that, let's let's spill spill the the coffee. coffee with Eve. Great. Um, my name is Eve, and I have been a fan of Marilyn Manson for almost 27 years. Um, I was about 16 the first time I heard of him. And the way that I heard of him was through my best friend. She went out of town for the weekend to see some of her friends. And when she came back, she was like, oh, my God, you have to hear this new band I found out about, Marilyn Manson. Um, and that this was back when we still had cassette tapes. And she had recorded the, um, the tape from somebody else. So it wasn't even actually, you know, a CD or an actual tape. It was a recording. And um, it was, I believe it was Antichrist Superstar at that point. And the really cool thing about it is I didn't know what he looked like. I didn't know anything about the band. I had no idea. All I was basing it on was his voice and the music. And I was sold, like immediately sold just from the voice and the music. Right. And um, something I found out, like I realized really quickly is that I was really into him as an artist, whereas she and then a lot of other friends were more about the shock value. Um, so a lot of my friends from high school fell off the Marilyn Manson wagon, but I, I never did. Um, but anyway, so I, I listened to the music with her and I was completely hooked. And then I did research and looked into him and, um, found out a lot about him and started buying all of the albums and everything. And the rest is history. Here I am now 43 and, um, I love him just as much now as I did then. So, um, Anyway, my experience with meeting him, I've actually met him twice. Um, I've been to nine concerts so far and looking forward to more someday when we get there. (laughs) Um, But so I've met him twice. And the first time I met him was when he did his the very first meet and greet that he ever offered. And this was back in. (laughs) Yeah. It was, it was really exciting. It was back in 2012. And um, something funny about it is that I almost didn't do it (laughs) because I didn't have a lot of money then. And it was, here's the thing. It was only $150, which is literally nothing when you think about the chance to meet your favorite, your favorite artist, but I didn't have a whole lot of money then. So I'm like, should I, should I do it? Should I not? And luckily a really close friend of mine was like, don't be stupid. (laughs) Like you'll figure out money. You're going to regret it if you don't do this. And, um, so I got it. I bought a meet and greet pass and, um, it was in Rochester, New York in 2012 at a place called the main street armory. And, um, it was actually a really interesting experience because it was in the basement of this old armory. And we went down into the basement to meet him. And the first thing I thought of was his creepy, abusive grandfather and all of his childhood experiences in that creepy basement. And I thought, I wonder if he's actually comfortable being down here. You know, I hope that this isn't a a triggering thing, Um, but it ended up being fine. So uh, we all got in line and waited to meet him. And, um, when I approached the door, I was able to see in and there was, you know, a table set up that he and Twiggy were sitting behind. And I remember blue lighting. I believe there was a lamp plugged in. Um, if I remember correctly, I, I remember some blue lighting 
And um, Lindsay was sitting in the corner behind the table, like behind him. And uh, she was very quiet. She was just sitting back there quiet and observing everything. Um, and I had the long, hard road out of hell book with me for him to sign and stood there. And it, there are no words for actual, like, you, you're, um, it's one thing to see him on stage, but to come face to face with him right there in front of you, there's no words for that. I, I, I can't even explain that. Um, and so finally it was my turn and I approached the table and he is one of the kindest, um, most sincere people I've encountered. He's very gentle. He's very soft spoken. Um, he looks you right directly in the eyes while you speak and listens to everything you're saying and really takes it in and really cares. Um, and I wasn't really nervous. I was just excited, but if I had been, yeah, if I had been nervous, um, he would have put me completely at ease with the way that he is. He's, he's very calming, like, you know, and, um, I, so I approached him, I introduced myself to him and I said, um, uh, oh, at this point it was, I had been a fan for 17 years. And so I said to him, I have been waiting 17 years for this moment and I can't believe I'm finally here. Um, and he said, wow, 17 years, you know, that that's quite a while and this is cool and everything. And we talked and then I had asked, I asked him if, um, he would ever consider doing a spoken word album. Um, because I just love his voice, but especially his, his speaking voice. He just something about it. I, I just love how it sounds. And there are a few things that you can look up on YouTube where he, he's done videos just talking. Um, and I thought, how cool would that be if, if he would ever do a spoken word album where he just maybe just speaks his lyrics from songs or anything else. And, um, he paused for a minute and thought, and then he looked at Twiggy and they gave each other this really knowing look. And I don't know what that look was about. I don't know if there was something already in the, in the works, but it was kind of this look of, I can't believe she just said that. Like, <laughs> how is she onto this? You know, but I, so I don't know, or maybe it was just, Oh, what a cool idea. Isn't that neat? You know, I don't really know, but um, he said, he said something along those lines. Yes. And that, that's all he, that's the deepest he got into it. He didn't say much more. Um, and he, um, ended up signing my book. Uh, when, when he took the book from me, he, um, held my hand too. (laughs) And it sounds ridiculous, but it was like electric shocks going up my arm, you know, like, you know, I don't know. It's hard to explain, but anyway, um, he signed the book and what he wrote was to Eve spoken 17 because I had asked him about doing a spoken word album and it had been 17 years that I had waited to meet him. And, um, he patted the book after he signed it, he patted the book and rubbed it. And he said, there you go. And I said, thank you. And he handed it back. And, um, I said, is there any chance of hugging you right now? Could I get a hug? And, um, he said, you absolutely can have a hug, but not right now because there's so many people waiting behind you. Um, when we get to the taking pictures part, I'll make sure to give you a hug. And I said, (laughs) yeah, Uh, because we, we were all meeting him. And then after that, we had to get in another line to take a a professional photo with him. So, um, I said, don't, don't think I'm going to forget your promise because I won't. (laughs) And I like laughed and he said, okay, hold me to it. And, um, so anyway, I went and got in the other line and then we, all went in to get pictures taken with him and it was the coolest thing that Twiggy was there too for the pictures because most people that had gotten meet and greets thus far for that tour Twiggy wasn't there and um my show ended up being the only one that Twiggy was in the pictures for so that was a really lucky thing um anyway so I went I approached them again for the picture and um it was a really cool picture because Manson hugged me. So my head was right against like his neck and his chest. And then Twiggy was behind. So it, I don't know. It was just a really cool like pose, you know, to have them both right there because they had meant the world to me for so long, you know? And yeah. yeah. And so they took the first picture and I thought that was going to be it, you know? And, um, I looked up at him and I said, okay, well, that was a pose for the picture, but you promised a hug. So, you know, lay it on me. Oh my Lord. He grabbed me. And I mean, he's a big guy. He's big. He's like, 
you know, yeah. the boots make him, the boots make him look big, big as it is, but without the boots, he's still a big guy. And, um, he grabbed me and pulled me to him and like, <laughs> like jokingly grinded on me, like just joking. He was being very funny and he like grinded on me. And, um, then he like, you know, shook me really like hard. He's like shaking me and he's bear hugging me. And I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> and, um, he like, he lets go of me and he's like, I just fucked you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, you, you did something. You sh- you sure did something. You you definitely gave me the hug you promised me. That's for sure. And uh, everybody was laughing. D- Twiggy could barely stand. He was laughing so hard about it. And um, finally, the woman that was taking pictures was like, "Okay, okay, let's take the other one." And I was like, "Oh, we get another one. That's that's great." And she was like, "Yeah, we take two just in case one isn't very good." And so then the second one is the one that actually ended up being better um because twiggy's like i don't know he's just embracing me from behind and i was between both of them it's a really cool picture and um it was a it was a great experience but so then just before we left i cannot or before i left i cannot for the life of me remember what he said but he said something hilarious and i wish i could remember and i looked up at him and i said oh my god i love you so much and he he like backed up he got very reserved he like put his hands up like this and had this concerned look on his face and he's like no 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 you don't love me you don't and that has stayed with me my whole life and it will it will stay with me because it was such a such a sincere reaction I realized in that moment what he was saying is you don't actually know me (laughs) you know what I project to the world you know Marilyn Manson but you don't know me myself as a person and I think that was very sincere. Um, that's a genuine person, you know, to, to point that out. And I looked up at I looked up at him and I said, well, you know what I mean? I, what I mean is I love the you that is projected to me through the music and through the television. I love the artist. And he said, okay, fair enough. I'll give you that, <laughs> you know? Um, but I just, I was really impressed with how genuine that was. That was a very cool thing for him to say, I, I feel. So um, that was my first experience. And I do need to say that considering the kind of hug he gave me <laughs> and how close we were and everything, I was not a- afraid of him. I was not nervous. I was not scared. Nothing creeped me out. And I have a very strong intuition as women do. We know the creeps. We know the ones we need to stay away from. And he is not one of them. Nothing is scary about this man. Like not at all. Um, And I think that, you know, if Brian Warner were a creep, it would show through Marilyn Manson. Of course. Yeah. Somehow, you know, we would be able to tell and there's none of that. then the okay, and then the other way, the other, or the second time, I'm sorry, the second time I met him was completely unexpected. We were at a concert four years later in 2016, and um, so we knew this concert was going to happen. And the night before it, it hit the news that he was in the hospital um, in the city, just an hour away from us, where we were going to go see him. He was in the hospital, but the news wasn't releasing why, and they just kept covering over and over and over where that he had been hospitalized in Syracuse, New York, but there was no details. So that's scary. You're like, why is he in the hospital? And it really was frightening. And so I was awake all night, worried about it. I could not sleep. And I w- was just sending good vibes to him in, in my way that I do. And um, hoping that he would be okay because we had no idea what was going on. And Um, I was like, of course, I don't want the concert to be canceled, but if he needs to, he's a human being and we all understand that. Um, so I went to the concert. It didn't get, it did not get canceled. And I went on no sleep. (laughs) I was exhausted and, um, we get there and a night of no sleep. And I had been scared all night about what was wrong. And, um, he finally came out on stage and everything. Well, he, um, didn't stay on stage while he had been in the hospital. He just said, Syracuse, New York, it's really good to see all you guys. I'm happy to be here. And then he kind of chuckled like, oh, you know, I barely made it, you know. And um, the the concert went on and he only performed for about 45 minutes. You could tell he was exhausted. Like he started the concert with some energy and then he was just exhausted. Um, 
and only lasted 45 minutes, but I thought it was really cool that he did the concert regardless that speaks to his character as well. Um, anyway, so we were getting, we got toward the end of the concert and he starts to perform the beautiful people and um, uh, completely unexpected. He came down off the stage with the microphone to walk around the entire amphitheater and sing. Like normally he just comes down and stays in the front rows, you know, but yeah. he took the microphone and he headed to walk around the entire amphitheater. And I was like, Oh my God. And I was wearing the t-shirt from the fir- the meet and greet when I first met him. And I said to my girlfriend, I screamed, he's coming down this way. And she's like, go, go, go. And I, so I went, I ran down to the front right where he was going to walk and here he comes. And so I, I am not ever, and I will never be the kind of fangirl to ambush a, a famous person. I'm not like that. I'm very reserved and I won't touch them unless it's okay with them. So I didn't rush him. I did not rush him, but I did go down so that we would meet. And he's got this little security guard guy who's like just a little guy. And I'll tell you what, that man takes his job seriously. He came right in front of Manson and he put his fingers like this and he pushed my chest right here really hard. It hurt. It like hurt. And he's like, no, get back, stand back. And I was like, Oh, and I didn't know a little man could pack such a punch, but (laughs) but they can. And, um, I stepped back of course, out of respect and Manson caught the, um, front of my pic, my, the picture on the front of my shirt, he saw it and remember, you know, he's like, Oh my God, that's from the meet and greet. I could tell on his face. He's like, I've met her before. And he was like, come on, come here come here. And so I went right up to him and he gave me a huge hug. He, uh, oh my God. And the whole thing was really only about 10 seconds, honestly, because it was just in the middle of some lyrics while he had a quick break. So it was 10 to 15 seconds, but he gave me this great big hug. And again, there, there was my face on his neck and, (laughs) you know, but he held me, he hugged me for a minute. And, um, then he like tapped my back. Like, I gotta go, I gotta go. And um, he squeezed my hand and then off he went. And my girlfriend, Stu, oh my God, her cell phone stopped working. It, w- it didn't take pictures. It got one picture of me letting go of his arm. So oh, all you can see is my blurry arm and him with this big smile on his face. But it didn't get an actual picture of it, which, oh, drives me nuts to this day. Um, but anyway, so he went off. He finished the song and then he yelled, um, good night and dropped his mic and he was gone. And um, I just collapsed in the nearest seat and burst into tears because it was completely unexpected. And I thought to myself, he, he seriously could have just continued on. He could have let his security guard do his job and could have continued on, but he took the time. He saw my shirt and he took the time to make that connection, which again speaks to how genuine and nice he is and caring, you know? Um, so I collapsed in that seat and I burst into tears <laughs> from the shock wow. of it. And there was a woman sitting there and she says to me, honey, you don't need to cry. It's really not that big of a deal. And I'm like, oh, it's a huge deal. <laughs> it's a huge deal. And I thought she probably wasn't th- there specifically for him, you know? Um, and if she was, then she doesn't understand how important he is, you know? Yeah. So those were my two experiences. And I, I just wanted to share with people how nice he is and not scary you know yeah that says a lot about him that he really does remembered you right right I thought so too and I could see it in his eyes it's not it's not like he was just like oh I I want to take the time for this fan I I could see the remembrance in his eyes like you know and it had only been four years so I think that he genuinely remembered me you know he probably still does I mean, uh, other yeah. people have said that he remembers that, you know, they've met him more than once and they're like, oh, he knows exactly who I am. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I mean, yeah. you're not the first person to say that and you yeah. won't be the last. Right. I, I, I really believe that he cares about us. I really do. You know, um, so it's just a great thing. And I'm, I'm so thankful that he's in this world and he's here and we've all had the opportunity to share this experience with him it's just a really cool thing and you know so I think he's probably really smart too I do too and smart Mm -hmm. people tend to be very aware and absorb Mm -hmm. like what's happening around them yes yes 
I think he is very smart, you know, um, and very intelligent people can come off aloof uh, or stuck mm-hmm. up or a little weird, oh, yeah. but it's, it's none of those things at all. It's just, it's just their own intelligence and how they are, you know? Yeah. Um, so anyway, really I'm, cool. I yeah, like I'm very thankful. Yeah. 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 I hope, I hope of, people enjoy my story. <laughs> I think they yeah, will. I do too. Yeah. Speaking of um, small bouncers, <laughs> I, mm-hmm. one of my jobs as a former restaurant manager mm-hmm. was bouncer. Cause I had oh, really? have security in the bar. So mm-hmm. the manager had to do it. And I did it for many years and I'm five foot one. Yeah. And wow. I never had, I never was unable to dissolve any problems. And yeah. I mean, he probably shouldn't have pushed you. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Well, I mean, impressive, but yeah, yeah. It, I'm, yeah, it was a little intense, you know, um, but honestly, I didn't feel attacked. It's, I don't feel like a victim or like I was attacked or anything. I think that he probably loves the Manson just as much as the rest of us and takes his job really seriously. And it's no secret that there are some crazy fans out there that are off their rocker. (laughs) So he just needs to be careful. And um, that push wasn't meant to hurt me. It was just meant to get my attention. Like, like you, you need to take this seriously. You cannot touch him. You can't be around him, you know, like pay attention to me. And it sure did because I've never been like jarred like that, but I I understand he was just doing his job and yeah. um, I'm honestly thankful that he was protecting him, you know, because that's a good point. Be, yeah. There could be crazy situations and yeah, no kidding. You never know what someone might be trying to do. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's okay. You know, I'm not upset about that part of it, but now, I mean, if he grabbed me by the hair and threw me on the ground, that would have been different, but it wasn't anything like that. It was just a little push, you know? So it was all right. But, why was yeah. he, do you remember why he was in the hospital? Did it ever come out? It never came out. It never came out. Now he did catch swine flu when that was a thing. Um, but that wasn't this concert. That was the different way of it. Like other. So back in 2009 ish. Yeah. Wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. So I know that some prop guns fell on him during a show once. And he ended up in the hospital because of that. Yep. That was after, that was after this concert as well. Okay. You know, I'm glad you bring that up because that's another example of how much he cares and how genuine he is. He did end up in the hospital from that. Those guns that fell on him could have killed him. Like they literally could have crushed his body and killed him, but they just, it just broke his leg. Um, And instead, instead of being out of work, he chose to have a special um, wheelchair made for him that looked like a church window. Um, it, 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 appeared to be like steel or metal, but it was designed to look like a church window behind him and almost like he was sitting in a throne. And he used this chair, like a motorized wheelchair, um, to do his concerts it, with the cast on. Cool. Of course he did. That's very yeah, man- that's working. Very man- that's too, I mean. Yeah. So he's a nice person, I believe. Like I don't know Brian Warner, but I I think he's a nice person, you know? So like I said, a little bit of Brian Warner has to shine through Marilyn Manson. Like, yeah, you know, Marilyn Manson comes from Brian Warner. So you can't tell me there's not a little bit of him there. <laughs> yeah. But um, I guess the only other thing I would say is that people really need to educate themselves about this case and learn the truth. Um, there are a lot of details and a lot of proof that he is innocent. And I really wish that everyone would educate themselves instead of just drinking the Kool-Aid. And jumping on the bandwagon, you know, yeah, educate, learn. So, anyway, those are really cool stories. Yeah, <laughs> they are. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think that's all about all I have to say. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that story. Yeah. I yeah. love those stories. Why can't I? Yeah. I think yeah. you can see a lot of a person in a mm-hmm. simple, inter- not, not simple, like a quick interaction like that. Mm-hmm. For and sure. a lot of celebrities would not be that nice. No. And they're not that nice in meeting great. Some of them won't even do them. Some of them right. Like, 
exactly. And like they're expensive. If they do yeah. do them, they're very expensive. Like, um, I don't Bon Jovi, for example, it's a thousand dollars to meet them, you know? So <laughs> like, and Marilyn Manson has never been one to really care about the, the money. I can tell from the, the money I've spent on tickets. He's not, that's not his first priority, you know, it's the fans and, and it's the fans and, um, making it, making it accessible and making it so that we can be there for the experience, you know? So really it's cool. not like, it's not like Stevie Nicks where you're paying $3,000 for a ticket <laughs> just to be in the stadium, you know? So anyway. Yeah. We've been to a lot of nine inch nail shows and those were never super expensive mm-hmm. either. Yep. Yep. That's good. That's how it should be. You know, I mean, I do believe in paying money. Of course, this is how they're making their living and this is their job. So yes, I'm going to spend money, but I'm, I'm talking about thousands of dollars. That's extravagant. That's over the top. Some of those, some of those artists, like I, I think they want to bankrupt their fans. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I agree. So yeah, for sure. But anyway, I don't know what else to say. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much you. for sharing yeah. that with us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I I, I talk. I love that story. I do. Yeah, and it's. I hope that more people reach out to you guys as this goes on, um, because it's important to hear from the fans. Like I said, you know, especially female fans, because we're real. We are really the ones that can speak out and say he's not creepy and he's not scary. You know, so I really hope more people will do this. And um, to talk to you guys, it's a big opportunity and it's important. Yeah. You're so. so right about that. Yeah. 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 So, yay. I'm so excited that it, I did this. Thank you. And we have had a lot of people come out of the woodwork. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. And um, I'll be watching everything you guys do. I'll, you know, I'll keep, keep it, keep on it. So, okay. All right. Thank you. We You're welcome. Have, all right. Okay. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Right, bye. We are going to end the interview here. A big round of applause. And thank you to Eve for sharing her story. That was really wonderful. And it was so bright of her to come forward and say that because this is the stuff that nobody else wants to touch, not with the 10 foot pole. Click on that thumbs up if you like this video. Smash that subscribe button down below. Do you see what we have accomplished here? And we are not finished at all. Watch the video at the end. Watch it, watch it, watch it. Even if you've already seen it because you know you want to. Give that bell a big ring to indicate that you want to be notified when we post updates generally on normal weeks. We post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday at 11 a.m. Central, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Sometimes we go live on Sunday nights as well as throughout the week on both YouTube and TikTok. We also have a podcast entitled Gavin with Gala Sisters, which is a podcast on movies and TV, which drops on Tuesdays at the exact same time. But since we're Rachel and Rio, we can't just have one podcast, right? Oh, no, 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 no. We have to have two. We have a second podcast that drops the Thursday before a WWE pay-per-view event and I, the Gala Sisters presents Mr. Wrestling Chris. Yes, we do. And go check out our merch that we designed ourselves. And again, like I said earlier, go check out our online store too. support small businesses. And if you just want to donate to our channel, because, you know, this is work. We do put a lot of effort, time, and energy into this. Then you can buy us coffee or donate through PayPal. But please don't go broke doing it. We know times are hard. We don't expect anything from you. And remember, this channel is just the two of us. And even if you are upset that you're not a part of this in the way that you want to be, there's no reason to lash out. Please be respectful of people who come on here. Respect their privacy. And don't harass them or us ever. And if you do, this can not be a good thing. You need to be quiet. If you don't like somebody, you move on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That'd be a really good piece of advice. Yeah. We're all on the same team here. We don't want to be split like the formal community. No. So, yeah. Let Eve know how much you appreciate her coming on here and that you support her and her speaking up because that was very brave of her. And we're so proud of her. Also, we didn't say this earlier, but Rhea and I, we're almost 40, too. So... 
yeah, I don't know if you guys know that, but we're not youngins. We're not young, young clucks. <laughs> we're not falling off a turnip truck yesterday. Just so you guys know, a little piece of information. But yeah, if you want an interview too, you know, we don't have to open our channel and share it with people. We are doing it because we want to, and we think that it really will help Marilyn Manson. Then email us or talk to us on any social media platform. We will talk to you again soon. Love and share. Bye. Bye. Thank you.